And today I will talk, uh, talk about the first use of AcuFab L4D here. And uh, uh, I will go through the whole process of the first use of the printer. And then I will talk about some key points about this printer. So. Yeah, the first part of today, I will uh, go through the overview of the workflow. And uh, the, in order to, the, to use the printer first, you will, get, uh, you will need the 3D modeling data. This 3D modeling data usually comes from designing software and the scanner. And uh, from those uh, designing software and the scanner, we will get the STL file and o o or OBJ file, both, both formats. Uh, uh, can be read by the IQWare, which is the data preparation software for our IQFab L4. After the IQWare, we will get well, we will get a sliced file. Uh, this sliced file is in the SLP4 format that can be read by the L4D. And uh, then after this printing, and uh, we will do some post process, such as washing extra uh, extra rings on the model or uh, uh, remove those parts, and uh, then we will do the post curing uh, in the curing unit, and uh, then finally we will get our final product. So this is the overview of the workflow, uh, how the printer actually works. So uh, during this workflow, we will face some risks, but don't be too worried about this. Uh, first is the UV light. The UV light we need to prevent to look at this UV light directly. And uh, also some ethanols that we are going to use the ethanols to clean the extra rings. And also some sharp tools. The sharp tools we will use to uh, like remove the parts from the build platform or remove those parts. But be careful about this. And uh, also for the printing material, just remember wear gloves all the time when you're uh, dealing with these uh, liquid uh, rings. And uh, just take care of the Mm, th th those parts, and you will be fine. And the next, oh, so next is the printing setup. So, uh, as you can see, this printer is just took out of the box, and uh, we just remove the plastic bag out for it. And before you turn on the connect the cable and turn on turn on the machine, the first step is very important. Please remember to remove the foam inside the printer. So I will show you the foam. You need to open the hood of the cover and take out this small package. Actually, in this uh, small package is our toolbox for the um, printer. So um, right now, this is the uh, inside of the printer. So at this stage, you can turn on the uh, turn on the power. So I already connect the power cable here. This is a power port, and this is a power button. It's on the right side of the printer. Just turn on it. And uh, right now the system is initializing. And during this initializing process, we can see the printer will go up in short time. So uh, this um, movement is actually the, this, the platform is go back to the initial position, which is the top position. So if you didn't remove the format at this place, this area, the platform will get stuck. So let's just with the initializing step process. So um, well, with the platform is going up, we can take out this. Um, rinse tank. Uh, as you can see, there are some protections on the rinse tank. We also need to remove all the protections. Put the rinse tank back. So uh, right now, actually, this printer is ready to print. Uh, but I will introduce more about this uh, printer. So uh, first, I will talk about the hardware of the 
printer, which is the main components about it. So this is the, as you can see on the PowerPoint, this is the chamber door. And the, the chamber door is used to prevent the UV light. And uh, next is the build platform that all the parts will be built in this on the platform. And under this, this is the rinse tank we just took out. And under the rinse tank, there is a LCD screen. And the, uh, there is a protector layer on the LCD screen. Please do not remove the protector. And uh, on the front of the uh, printer, there is the touch screen. And uh, this is the uh, FabWare system. That is the firmware uh, used for the printer. And on the side, we get the, on the right side, we get all this uh, US, USB port, line, line network port, and uh, the power port I just talked about, and the power button. And uh, for the, there are two softwares actually used for the printer. The first is the Acquire, that is the data privacy software that I will talk about later. And uh, first, and, uh, and also the FabWare I just mentioned before, this is the, the system that used for the uh, printer. And uh, uh, actually, okay. So actually, the uh, this print, this UI is uh, right now is the in the old style. Um, we will have the new UI coming soon, um, but so we do not have a specific release date. We will confirm the release date with our R and D department. Then we will get back this information to you. So uh, this these two different uh, uh, styles is just different in. Uh, those uh, UI style and uh, organization, both, uh, but they, they have the uh, most uh, similar functions. The similar, the, the functions are almost the same, so just different uh, styles. And so I, I will go through the, uh, the, the, the UI um, one by one. Okay. So. Take a close look at this. Uh, oh man. Right now, this is the main interface. And the main interface is, we can see there are three main buttons, printing, print settings, and about. And uh, beside those three main buttons, we also get some detailed information in the main, main interface on the Top left corner, there is the temperature and the humidity monitor. So the temperature and the humidity is very important to a successful print. And they have the safety range for the temperature is 10 to 30 degrees, and for the humidity is 10% to 70%. And the top uh, bottom left corner, it will record how many layers you have printed. And on the right corner, it will, uh, you can choose the different uh, materials here. Which has shining 3D and uh, shining 3D, all the shining 3D rings, and then you can choose others if you like. So um, I will go. Uh, this is the main interface. Then I will go to the printer. Pick printer. Uh, okay. So on this left side is the local disk files. So uh, if we have some. Mm, uh, local uh, local jobs it will save it here, and uh, if you have some uh, jobs in the flash drive, and uh, you also insert the flash drive into the uh, USB port on the side, it will show the USB icon here, and you can choose the file from the uh, flash drive. Uh, I will show show it later uh, after we uh, talk about the Acquire, then we will get the SLP file actually. So back next is settings. So there are four main sections. Four main sections uh, in the settings. So, uh, how does the LCD keep track of the rinse tank prints? Let's just remove the internet section. So, uh, uh, how does the L4D keep track of the rinse tank prints? Is it by removal of the tank or internal system measure the how many layers? Uh, it is. It will be recorded by the internal system. It will. Uh, uh, every SLP4 file will record how many layers. Uh, will will contain the information about how many layers the printer should be 
printed, so it will add those layers it, uh, and uh, appear on the uh, printer. So that's it. Uh, so let's keep up that, talk, talking about this setting page. So we will have four main sections. First is the software settings. So this is just uh, some general settings, like some you can change the language settings and other uh, whole sensors. That's general settings. Next is the network settings. So uh, we can choose the Wi-Fi here. Uh, if we want to connect the printer to our network. And the next is the mechanic settings. So mechanical settings, this uh, main mechanical settings is about the v, v access controller, which is the which is the uh, build platform. So this part is mainly control control this uh, control the, uh, the, 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 the yeah this one. You can control the platform move up and down. And we also do the manual level here that I will demonstrate later. Okay, next is the project settings. So project settings, we have different uh, projection images, such as bad images that or black images. And those projection images are used for our engineering to diagnostic the state of the LED panel. So, and uh, except the uh, projection diagnostic, and we also have the clean residue function on the top. So this clean residue function is mainly used for if we have some failed prints and uh, we may left some small residues in the rinse tank. Uh, we cannot continue printing at this stage because these small residues may damage our uh, rinse tank. So we will use this function to clean the uh, whole, whole screen of the bottom layer and then remove the bottom layer. And I, will, I also will do this um, operation later. And the next. Next it's about. So in this about page, we will see the uh, printer information such as the serial numbers and the. Uh, this is the firmware vision visions and uh, uh, all those informations about the printer itself. And then they, we can see there are two main buttons. It's called a uh, network update or the. U disk update. So this, um, those two buttons are both used for update the firmware of the printer. If there is some uh, a new version of the soft, uh, firmware available, and uh, your printer is connected to the network, you can choose the just choose the uh, network update. But if uh, your your printer is offline, you also can copy the update file to the Press drive and use the UDisk up uh, update. And uh, the, on this uh, left corner is the usage information. So it will, will record how many jobs it have, have been done and also the layers and other uh, some info information. And uh, here is the active lessons on the right corner. So actually, all the printers that left our factory are, are already active. But in case you receive some, in case you receive a printer that is not active, uh, you can choose the active license and the, the active 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 file that is inside the flash drive that comes with your printer. So just inside the insert the insert the flash drives on the USB port and then click the active license and then, then it will be done. So um. And uh, for this printer, actually, we also have the admin mode that's used for our engineers to do the diagnostic and uh, some uh, deeper operations. So uh, the tricks to enter the admin mode is here. And there is a software vision, vision and uh, there is some uh, blank area. Just click this area for 10 times. Okay, so it will ask for the uh, admin password. And you will need to send this machine serial number and the request code to our engineering. So we will generate this uh, admin password for you. And once you enter the password, you will enter, uh, you will enter the 
enter the admin mode. So after you enter the admin mode, there will be uh, advanced settings under the project settings. So we can do the uh, deep operation and uh, some diagnostic if you print to have some problems. Okay, so that is pretty much everything about the printer itself. And uh, we will talk about, uh, and it's, uh, because it's uh, mainly used for LCD technique, so it will have some consumables. So first is the rinse tank and the fuel. And uh, so the rinse tank, the film is very uh, fragile and uh, sometimes it's easy to broken. And uh, we, so we provided those we provided those uh, for, uh, from change kit, film change kit. So the lifetime for the, this film, this is actually the film itself. As you can see, it's a uh, it's a FP, FPP film in between the those two uh, metal frame. So the lifetime of this film is about. So, um, so 30,000 layers. So it will last uh, for about one month and a half. And it's very easy to replace. And we will provide the uh, the, 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 the film itself and uh, also those screws and the tools for, for you to change the uh, film. Okay. Okay, next is the our LCD screen, also known as the image master module. So we will also provide these tools to replace it, and this uh, stick. And uh, so this is the and this is the screen itself. It's the LCD screen, and at the lifetime lifetime for it is two hundred thousand layers, so it will be good for about four months. And uh, we also have those screws for it. So everything is inside this uh, package. And the next is the LED panel, uh, also known as the this one, black light mo uh, backlight module. So inside this module is just a LED panel. Okay. So the lifetime for the LED panel is about 600,000 layers. So it will be good for about 12 months, it's one year. So as you can see, the LED panel is uh, four by, four by 11, uh, 6 by 11 LED array. And this is the front, and this is the back. So. Yes, and the tools that are used to replace the LED panel that is inside a two box. Okay. And all the uh, replacement operations, we, 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 we made uh, the operation videos that uh, is already online. You can find it on, on our YouTube channel and uh, also in the resellers share folder. So both. And uh, so all of the, the, the operation is pretty simple. And uh, I think it's very easy to replace all those components. Okay. So uh, this is uh, all the, um, I would say, it's the hardware part of the printer. and. Uh, and the printer is ready to print. So we will move to the AccuWare part. The AccuWare is the data pressuring software that's uh, used for the, um, per, the, 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 the data, uh, the 3D modeling data operations. So uh, I will go to the laptop and uh, the, do the share screen. Okay, well, so I got a question about what is the price of those 
and consumables and the price the price information you may need to contact our sales to uh, have the detailed information so this is the more like the technical present so let's do the okay wait wait a second first So and this is the uh, IQware, the size software we are using for the L4D. And uh, when we are using the IQware first time, the first step is to import the machine. So uh, uh, you, you will see this uh, main interface like this. The machine name is the L4D D40. If you are using the IQware for the first time, so the you know you you will take the you will take the the flash drive that come with your printer and insert the flash drive to the uh, laptop. So and I click this settings icon on the right side, uh, right top corner, and I click the import machine, and I use the from PC and I find your flash drive and then find your SNDV DV file. So this is the file that contains the, your printer's profile, and uh, just click open. It will say the import succeed. Click confirm. And right now you can find your printer serial numbers. This is the uh, GJBA 004L11 is, is your machine serial number. So before you try to go to the next step, please make sure you select this correct machine name because the slicer file, that the SLP4 file, will contains the information about your printer. And if you didn't select the correct, correct um, machine serial number, uh, if like if you have multiple printers at the, at the same time, and it will uh, have some error messages on the printer that says the slice file does not match with the printer. So be careful about this part. Select the correct import machine first and then select the correct serial number under this machine name on the list. And the next is the material. Material, we, we accept the, uh, right now we only have the uh, Shining 3D material because we didn't uh, update our material package. Uh, so this is uh, how we update material package, system settings, and click update. And we will check the quick check. Okay, so I guess... Okay, this one and open it again. So because the uh, actually we used the uh, this laptop before, so this is the uh, we will get some issues. We'll try to get, go back to the initial state. Uh, system settings update and check. So uh, usually it will, uh, if it, it is the first time of the using, usually it will appear the. Uh, all the latest material informations. I guess the right now it's due to uh, we have the other actually we have other materials on the different uh, printers. 
Uh, so we we have the these two pr printers, and uh, I think these printers have all the materials that. So we just copy these materials from this printer. And to the material folder here. And then we start the sub. Okay, so we will get all the materials here. So in the essentially we get all the materials from for the Chinese 3D brand. And except the Chinese 3D materials, we also have other third party materials such as next dance or post redo. And I will give you the the list of the certified third party materials later. And right now we I will we'll just choose the Chinese 3D and the DM12 material. And you can choose the layer thickness here. Just point oh five. So um, if the point oh five will give you the best details, and uh, but the point one will get you the fastest uh, speed. So we'll choose the point oh five and then go to the next step. So in this step, um, we are going to open the STL file or OBJ file at this step. You can choose the open file icon here and then click the models we are going to print. And you, you also can just drag the models into this stage uh, from the outside. Those are fine. If you want to open the file, you just, just opened the recent. We also offer the recent file list here. Go this and file this, and then click again. Uh, so right now we got to, uh, and uh, we have some detailed informations at the bottom bottom of the screen. So this is the machine type. If you can see, this is machine type you are going to use is L4D, and the machine name, which is your serial number, and the material you are using, and then the layer thickness. Uh, you choose is 0.05 and how many layers in total? 416 and the time estimate the time cost is one hour and 40 minutes. So this uh, time cost is actually only related to this the the x the height of the model, which is the uh, the direction. So if we copy more more models here. It will not affect the printing time. See, if the previously we only have two models, right? The cost time is one hour and four, 14 minutes. But we now we get four models. It will still be the one hour and 40 minutes. But actually, we can do if we just place like this. We can the maximum of these like those C shape uh, mod. Dental models. So the max load of uh, this platform is about eight. And if you are trying to print in veneer or some like just a single single die or bridge corn, that's you can print. Uh, uh, I guess fifty uh, five fifty or sixty. So we need some organization. So I will just put a four here. So, okay, if you get more, uh, if you get like eight models, it will, the printing time will still be the same. So it's only related to the uh, height of this model. So during this uh, next step is the layout. So during this step, we can choose the, uh, there are four, and three main functions on the left side, move, rotate, and scale. And uh, you can move it and rotate the model uh, freely. And in, in the rotation page, in the rotation section, we have this uh, important function. It's called pick bottom place that 
means you can pick a surface as your bottom surface. So I will choose this function and uh, select this model. And if I choose the, this surface as bottom surface, I just simply click this surface and it will move it back. If I choose the, for example, I choose this surface as the bottom surface, it will go up, it will become vertically. I just put that this again. And next is the scale. Scale that you can choose the scale uniform and ununiformly. Um, but for those um, dental models, we are not supposed to change the size, right? We want to keep the same uh, original size. So the, uh, we will not uh, use the scale function right now. And the next is the auto layout. But if you have multiple models, like right now, you can try to use this auto layout. It will lay out the models automatically for you if I add one more. So how, how to, uh, you, you can copy the uh, models just by select these models and uh, control C, control V. It will just <coughs> copy one more. And if I choose the auto layout again, Um, because the limitation of the space, it may take some time. Yeah. So we got five uh, five models total in total, and uh, and the time estimated time cost it still be the same. So next is the support. So you can add support if you need it. So right now, actually, those file th th those models are uh, not. Uh, I do, we do not need to add support for those models because they have a flat surface, a flat bottom surface. But in case we want to add uh, support, we just select those models and click the generate. It will automatically generate the support for you. And on this portal window, we will have different uh, uh, parameters for the supports, like bottom radians and about, uh, top radians and bottom radians. And uh, we will have uh, uh, more detailed information about how to place models in different angles because we can uh, we we we, uh, we can put it like some angles with the platform and how to add a support uh, for this technician videos in the future um, that go through detail about support and the position. And uh, all those different uh, uh, parameters you can adjust and uh, accept the auto generation. You can click the menu support here. That means you can add this support manually. So each, each, each circle is uh, uh, represent for uh, one support. We can click on this support it will delete the spot point. And if we click on this blank area, it will add the spot. Uh, but if we want to uh, delete the multiple spot at the same time, we just do our area selection and click delete spot points. So this is uh, how we do the menu spot. So right now, the as you can see, it will also check the printability on this top right corner. So because this part is not supported by the, we do not have support at this point. So this part uh, will have some uh, failed print risk. So it, it, the software will, rem will remind you to add some support at this area. So I just click the auto support for it again. I'll just generate support for all models. Okay, you can see the right area is disappeared. Okay. And uh, before you go to the next step, that is slice the file, you can go to the, you can check the, uh, the, 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 the models layer by layer by this layer preview function here. 
uh, see the right now is total um, 482 layers in total and we can choose each layers to check if the the prints are good so we are mainly focus on this this layer that the first layer that appears on the support uh, we can see all the the first layer is supported by the supports very perfectly so that's it everything everything looks good so next is the final step is slice so um, in this step we'll try we will the software will slice this 3d modeling uh, by layer by layer and uh, each layer will generate uh, one image that he used for the printer to print and on this top left corner you can see it appears the appears the uh, GPU I'm trying I'm using right now so uh, we recommend to use the uh, Nevada GPU because we will have the slice acceleration technology that's um, used uh, only for the Nevada GPU but if you are trying to if you use the AMD AMD GPU the slice speed maybe uh, will be slower so please um, if you want to get a best experience uh, try to try to try to use a Nevada um, G GPU and uh, I think the command setting uh, the camera configuration is um, 10 10 1050 tie that, that's it and uh, as you can see the slice process is finished and uh, on this um, this is a kind of summary summarization of this file uh, we got a file name and uh, your printer's name that which is the serial number and the what material are going to use and uh, and this dm 12 slash 0.05 this 0.05 is the layer thickness of the uh, material and the uh, cost of material in total so it's about 10 gram <coughs> and the um, estimate time cost is about two hours because we add some supports that's um, the height me that means the height of the models is a little a, a little bit higher uh, so the printing time cost will be longer and the next is we can just simply click open file fold and uh, copy this this uh, SLP4 file to our flash drive paste Uh, how can I add a new rings if I want to use a rings from another brand? Uh, so if you want to add a, add a rings that we do not offer the official material package, that means you will need to test these rings by yourself. And for in order to uh, test a new material and add the material in the, the material uh, in the uh, our material manager, you will need to uh, apply for the admin mode first then you will have the, this um, authority to add the uh, new rings profile and uh, do the do the test on this one uh, we will provide we will pro also provide you a guide to um, a quick guide to, uh, to to guide you about how to test a new material but those tests are only used for the very simple parameters such as uh, X explosion time and, uh, uh, how do you know um, which different base type to use the default is always also when doing the to change the base type to do something else on the list so uh, yes we usually um, always use the author and base but um, if we got some uh, small a very small parts that you may not you may not 
needed to use the base. You can just generate the support directory from the uh, from the from the build platform. Usually, we just just simply use the uh, author projection. That will obviously be the, the co most common solution. Okay, so I write I will approach that guide. So the guide for the test uh, for our new material is in the share folder that resells share folder list. Share folders. So uh, right now this. Uh, okay, so I just did some old files here. And uh, I will take the USB file to the printer. So again, the first trap that I will insert on the side of the printer, yeah. So we'll go back to the printer, and this is the, uh, yeah, on the right bottom corner, this is the USB icon I just mentioned before. Okay, this one. And uh, select the select the file. I think this this one. Uh, this this is the yeah. This is the uh, file I just sliced, and I will click the print. It will take a short time to. Per, Fine. So, um, okay, so this is the checklist before the print. Um, we want to make sure the print tab are correct and the, the material is well stirred. That means we need to uh, the, the, the shake the buttons before the, we add the materials and the project is clean and the residues are clean and I could confirm. And this is the uh, uh, this is the the, the printing page, page page, and uh, on this left section, uh, this is a current uh, image of the LCD screen. So the black part, black area, that means we will not have light. We will have we will not have the UV light, and the uh, the white area, that means we will have our UV light. That's how we cure the whole layer of the uh, models. And uh, here are some detailed information, like it will record how many uh, estimated cost of the rings and the layers, such as that. So if I click the if I click the printer, then the all the uh, printing process will start. So. Uh, because it's just a demonstration, I will not actually do the printing step. So next is uh, we will try to add the material. So the uh, if we are actually doing a printing, we will this the first uh, step we will add the material. This is the DM12 we are trying to use. So we need to shake the bottom like this for about like 30, 30 seconds. And uh, open the uh, open the bottle and uh, just pour the pour the rings in the rings tank. And uh, we will simply go back to the uh, the, 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 page, the page and uh, click printing. The, then the platform will go down and uh, cure the face tray and uh, repeat the step. So this is uh, how we are supposed to do the printing. And uh, we'll go back to the... So if we um, 
the if all the printing process is done, we are going to do the we are going to through the next step that is the post processing. The post processing the first is take out the models that we will remove the we will remove the platform like this. Just lose this uh, big screw, take out the print, and we will use some sharp sharp tools to remove the part from the platform and. Uh, Next, and next we are going to use the uh, antenna to clean the to clean the um, parts uh, because we will have some extra rings on the models and the echo that we are going to use to clean the uh, models is uh, the, the, the is over ninety five percentage. Echo and uh, after you clean it, and please remember, do you also remember you also need to clean the platform after each print because if you have some uh, small parts that left on the platform, which will damage the film of, of the rinse tank very easily. And next, uh, uh, you get clean the clean the uh, clean the clean the models. You will use the uh, compressed air to dry the surface of the model and then bring it to the curing unit and uh, do the post curing because the models you just took out of the printers are not actually fully cured. You will need a curing unit to do the, uh, to do the full cured. And uh, after this uh, post cure, you can um, touch, the, touch the model just by your uh, hand, you you are not you do not you wear the gloves. And next, you can remove the support on the on the models if you have some support. And actually, you can do this uh, remove support step before the post curing, so both methods are fine. So this is a uh, whole processing. So uh, the all the process I just talk uh, talk before that is the. Uh, mainly the over, over where, uh, overview of workflow of the printer step from the printer setup and how we install the printer and how to, uh, and the next is the how to modify the, the data, 3D modeling data that we are going to use our AccuFair, uh, AccuWare. And then we will take the, slice the file, go back to the printers and do the operations on the printer. And after we have our printed models, we will do the post-processing, such as washing and uh, post-curing. So this is the whole process of the uh, printing job. And the next, I will talk some key points about the printer. The first point is about the menu level. So menu level is very cr critical to a successful printer because um, if you do not have a good menu level, so that means your platform is not leveled with your uh, with your wrist hand. That means if your platform is not leveled with your wrist hand, it will have some failed prints, such as only half of them. Build platform. Uh, only half of the build platform, build platform have some models, and other half does not have anything. At this stage, you will need to do the manual level. But actually, all the all the printers that just left our factory is uh, adjusted perfectly. But in case you have some failed prints, we will do the printer um, manual level process, and I will dem I will do the operations, and do the demonstration for you. And the very first step is just take out the. We will not need to use the uh, reach tank for the manual level. Then we will take two pieces of the uh, apple paper, put it in the, under the platform. So these two A4 papers are used to simulate the to use the similar to the thickness of this FEP film. So that's it. And we will lose the screws screws on the 
perform at the four scores. So I know I I I have a, I have lose all the four scores scores here and I try to like move the platform like this. If you can move the platform freely, that means that all the scores are scores are losing. Okay. So next step, the third step is go to the settings. Go to the settings. So we'll take a close look at these settings. Uh, go back to the mechanic settings. Okay, go from here and uh, click the zero, uh, Z axis zero position adjustment here. And uh, as you can see, the platform will go down. So it's moved at the end of the, at the zero position, and then at this state, you are supposed to hold this paper gently, but do not work too hard on this one. So if you cannot, if you cannot pull out the paper, that means the platform is in the correct correct position. But if you can pull out the paper easily. That means the platform needed to go down a little more. So in case uh, if the uh, if the uh, paper, the, this A4 paper, can be pulled easily, you can choose the um, distance here. We usually to go by the 0 0.0 millimeters and just click find turning down the platform will move down for 0 0.0 millimeter. And we can try to, if we can try to pull out this paper again, and if the uh, this paper is tight and you cannot pull out, that means this is the correct position. And we will, if we find this correct position, okay, we will go back to the platform and uh, tighten all these four screws again, and in your diagonal order, like this, I will tie these screws first. And then this one. Okay, so once we tighten all these four screws, and then we can click the confirm here. Confirm. And the platform will move back to the top position. So this is the whole, this is the whole process about manual level. So we'll go back this. So, 
this is the uh, first key point about this printer. We will do the manual level. Uh, we, we, we will do the manual level if we have some failed prints. So just Okay, so next uh, next point is about the clean rinse tank process. So this function is in the also in the settings, in the settings and uh, in the project settings here. So this is the the function I just talked before. It's called the clean residue function. As you can see, it's in the project settings. I will just put a instant quiz. This process is pretty much is very simple. It will you can use it also when you have some failed prints and uh, left some small parts, some part inside this print tank. So you will the first you are going to uh, just clean the start clean. You will uh, wear gloves. Well, graphs and uh, click the start pane and click confirm. So the operation will basically cure the whole screen of the bottom layer for 10, for 10 seconds. It says the curing finished. Okay, confirm. And uh, we will use a PET card. So these are small plastic card that come with your two box and uh, try to uh, from here you can feel a layer that is Uh, it will kill the four bottom layers. So if there is some small residues in this rinse tank, they will cure together, and uh, you can remove the those together. And that's it. So this is the current residue probe. Um, this is a clean rescue process, and uh, that we are used mainly used for protect our protect our rinse tank. If we have some, if we didn't uh, do this step, then uh, we do have some failed prints and left small parts inside this rinse tank. And uh, the, uh, when we continue printing, and this platform will go down and uh, stay at the bottom. And those small residues will damage the rinse tank film and also the printer and also the LCD screen itself. So that's it. So this is the procedure about how to do the clean rinse, clean rinse tank. The Okay. So next, uh, next is the update information. So both for the both for both softwares, Acuware and Fabwares. Uh, for the Acuwares, it just uh, showed before. Okay. So. 
So the for the updated information is, is in the system settings for actually in system settings and click update and then we need to check. So if there is any um, latest version of the software available, it will appear here. It will update the software itself. And if you have some updates to the material package, it, the updated information will appear, will appear here in this bank. And you also can click update to update the material package. So this is the for the accurate and for the for the February that I just mentioned before in the about page. In the about page. Okay. In the about page, you can choose the uh, network updates or U disk update. If you have the uh, if you have the network, you can choose the network update. If you do not have it, you can just um, use the offline network uh, offline method that is flash drive. Next is the so here's the list of the cert certified third party material, uh, except those certain 3D materials we have. We do have the Keystone Next Dent and the Pulse Redo. And all the materials in black, black color, that is, we already have the official material um, parameter package for them. And all the materials that are in the blue color that we are going to have, we are still under test. We will have this material package available in future. And if you have, um, if our customers have some of their um, requirement about material they are going to use. We will collect those informations from our resellers and the customers, and then we will discuss internally to do to decide if uh, we are going to um, test those materials and re release some of our official official material packages. And so if. Uh, Next. Next is about to create a customer's profile. There. So this is the uh, questions, and I guess someone just mentioned before about how to create uh, their own profile. So the so the first step is apply for the admin mode. So right now it's here, and. Uh, if you are trying to apply, apply for that main mode, we will click the setting icons on top right corner again, and go to system settings, and click about. In this about page, we will have license button here. Just click license again. So it will appear the. Oh, sorry about sorry about that. I've got to share the screen. Uh, so uh, we will go back to the AQR again. So same the setting icons on the right corner and go to system settings and about, and then we will click the license button here. It will appear a pop-up window ask for your information. You will need to fill out the name, uh, your personal information of the company, you and uh, select the correct uh, diverse model. So it's here. So we are supposed to choose the L4D, right? And uh, copy your serial numbers here, and uh, fill out all the information and click click this check, and we will receive your application and we will approve it in one or two business days. So uh, after you have the, if after if you, after you enter the admin mode, you can go to the material manager here. And select your printer, printer serial number. And uh, if you are already in the admin mode, you can right click it. And it will have um, another operation set at add material. 
and you can click the add material and add your own profile. But uh, here's another important point about your own profile. So the the the, the So the customized profile that created by yourself is only is can can only be used on on your laptop. That means you cannot share this material package with others. Uh, but in case you want to share this material package with your customers, you will need to send these material packages to our engineers. Uh, we will remove the signatures on the material package, then you can share the material package with your customers. So that's it. This is some encoded encrypted process that we are going to, we need to process. So uh, next, uh, we also have, uh, uh, I also mentioned uh, the, it resets share folder in the uh, replacement in the um, replacement operations before. So we will have some marketing resource and technical resource under this resource share folder. And in case you are still not in the, you cannot, op uh, you are still not in the resource share folder list, please send uh, the, your information to the dental academic uh, email address and we will add you into the list. And then you can see all the materials so here is the So this is a Chinese 3 dental research resource. We will have some marketing resource, such as those branches of catalog uh, here. And we also have some technical resource for each, for the L4D. And this is menus. And here's, here's the operation, so operation videos I just talked about before is some unboxing, leveling, and printing, and cleaning, and all the repl replacement operation for the three consumables. So this is the software, the Acuware. We will, have, we will also have two uh, screen recordings about the Acuware software series itself and the uh, more detailed operation about the Acuware. And uh, the, this installer we will have released, uh, uh, we will have the installer for the latest uh, released Acuware. Next is uh, accept this we said it's share for we also have the support center. It's called the uh, Chinese It's called the Chinese Ready Dental dot com. This pro center here. Okay. So uh, this is the all the. If you have some common questions, you can first you can search in the, our knowledge base. But in case you do not have knowledge base, uh, we will have this all these different. Uh, 
such as those FAQs. So these uh, FAQs, we collect the most common questions and uh, do the some, so let's just this, how to import the machine. We'll have some uh, detailed guide about how to do the each step, how to do the operations step by step. So that's it. This is our knowledge base. But in case you cannot find, uh, you cannot not find our guide in this knowledge base, you can um, submit a ticket. If you have any other questions. So, uh, okay. So, uh, that's it for today's presentation. So, do you have any questions about our printers? So, we still have some time for the Q and A time. Do you have any questions about our printer? Uh, yes, the record of this webinar will be uh, sent by Sheldon. And uh, we will have some um, uh, because it is it's our second webinar, we also have some common questions from our first webinar. We will also send you the uh, send you some common uh, common questions and answers with these records. Have you done any research with Bengal rings? Yes, uh, we will have those Bengal rings in the in 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 future. We we already done some a couple of tests. Uh, such as the customer tree and the surgery guide. So those material will be available in future. What's the difference between the what's the difference between the L four D and L four K printers? So um L four D and L four K are pretty much the similar printers but they have different uh, I would say the different applications. So L four D we are going to Used mainly in the dental industry, and for the L4K, we are used in the common industry. So that's and so we will have different uh, materials for the uh, printer for these two printers. So for L4D, we will mainly use the dental materials such as the you know, like bangle rings you have mentioned before, and the L4K printers we will pro provide L4K with some engineering engineering materials. Like that, those. Um, do we have any more questions? This printer is cheaper of like Yeah, so um all the price information uh, you will need to check with our sales. Yeah, the Jennifer has answered the question. Yeah, she will uh, answer the all the questions about price, about the printer and uh, those consumables. Uh, so maybe some materials. Uh, which printer? Okay, so uh, as I mentioned before, the material, material, uh, the bangle materials we have tested is about is 
Cosmo Tree and uh, the, I believe it's Surgery Guide. And those materials will be in the material manager later. Um, It's better if we have a copy of the video. Yes, yes, we will send the today's video and uh, some common questions and answers together to you after the today's presentation. I have customers who are interested in a light cream coloring that is shining really fair one that they are testing. Who are interested in a light cream color rings? More of a... Let's go back to the... Also, and Mike, do you mention about the key model library that is Keystone? That's a Keystone material. Okay, so uh, we, we, are, we are going to test this material later. Actually, it will be available later. Like P key model. Do you know the non-toxic ones? Those can be cleaned with water. Okay, so do you know the non-toxic toxic rings? Those can be cleaned up with water. So actually, we do have some water washed materials that are used for the L4K, but for the dental use, uh, we do not have any materials like that all the materials we are going to clean with alcohol. Do, do you have any more questions? Okay. Okay, it's, everything is clear and uh, thanks for attending the webinar today.
and I hope you all have a good night. Thank you, and uh, bye-bye.